Gohan, son of Goku, last of the Saiyans, a hero, a warrior, but above all, son Gohan is a human. I'm Daron Weeb, and this is the peak of Dragon. Before we can get to the Cell Saga, we have to get to the titular character of the arc. Someone who carries that arc and is incredibly important, Son Gohan. Gohan's growth as a character is one of, if not, the most compelling of the entire story of Dragon Ball. Picture this. Goku's just married Chi-Chi, and after the defeat of Piccolo at the last World Martial Arts Tournament, he had become the champion, world's strongest under the heavens. We had no idea where the story was going, we had no clue what was going to happen from here, and we have a time skip. Five years later, and we're in Dragon Ball Z. And we begin in the exact parallel of how we had begun our journey with a young Goku. Both characters had started with them being alone in the forest, but unlike our adventurous carefree monkey boy, Gohan isn't Goku. This is made apparent at the very beginning of the story in episode 1. He's afraid. This immediately shows that Gohan is not a copy of Goku, and begins to create a character who would carry Dragon Ball into something new. The first, quote unquote, flawed character of the series. Gohan was not, and is not, the brave martial artist that his father was. He was a child. And it's this that brings us to one of Toriyama's cleverest dualities. As has been shown previously in the Dragon Ball manga, Toriyama has already established his writing style, that being the idea of rivals pushing you beyond your limits to new heights, and how martial arts betters yourself not only physically, but spiritually as well. This duality type writing goes especially deep during the Saiyan Saga. Everyone already knows about the commoner versus prince, low class versus elite, talent versus hard work that we have with Goku versus the prince of all Saiyans, Vegeta. Yet, there's an idea that people seem to gloss over. Which is... why? Why did the Saiyans even come to Earth originally? You know, before they learned of the power of the dragon's nutsack. It was, of course, to retrieve a child. A child that had been sent to the planet under the pretense of fighting and taking over the planet. Hmm. Seems familiar, right? Not only would Gohan also be ripped from his home and forced to survive to fight for someone else, but unlike Goku, Gohan had a family. Gohan had memories of a path in life that had been set before him that would be ripped away. It would be just as Piccolo says when he tells Gohan that forcing him to survive will make him a better fighter. This already shows the parallels between Goku and Gohan. Goku had sought out the path of martial arts on his own. After Goku hits his head and has all of his memories wiped about his mission, Goku would still seek out the path of strength, something that Gohan never had chosen. Gohan never had that same desire to fight, the same bloodlust that drove his father and the Z Fighters, something Goku would only come to realize after Piccolo. Piccolo, the one who had forced Gohan to become a fighter in the first place, drives it into his mind. Another strong parallel here, which is actually sad in a way, is that Piccolo himself grew up as a child on his own, but not like Goku. He had his memories of his father. He had memories of the past set before him. And so this is one of the key factors that makes Piccolo one of the only people to understand Gohan truly in his life. Piccolo knows that doing this will make Gohan stronger and callous and change him, an action that Piccolo himself would later come to regret realizing who Gohan truly was. Some of Gohan's key character moments in the entire series before we get to the Cell Saga is Gohan's rage. These moments of power Gohan displays through the series, such as the Raditz fight, the Saiyan Saga against Nappa when Piccolo is almost killed, and Frieza. These bursts of desperation and emotional weakness in Gohan's part are praised by the Z Fighters, like Krillin. Seeing these bursts of rage as his releasing of his true power. While in reality, the emotional and social stunting of Gohan from being alone all those months as a small child is what forced him to develop like this. Gohan always had the potential to become rageful, to become a Saiyan. He's always lived in two worlds, a human, a scholar, interested in knowledge and ingenuity, and how he takes after Bulma. Yet, he could never escape his fate. His fate as one of the last blood holders of Saiyans, one of the most powerful races in the universe. Many people praise Piccolo for what he had did to Gohan, seeing him as more of a father figure than Goku ever was. But in reality, what Piccolo did was he created a version of himself. Piccolo put Gohan in the same situation that he was, 
a young Gohan having just witnessed his father's death would be dropped in the middle of nowhere and forced to survive on his own. Piccolo took advantage of Gohan. He took advantage of Gohan's emotional weakness at that point in time. There was no debate over this, there was no approval from anyone of At Goku's actual friends like Krillin or even Bulma. Piccolo did what needed to be done. And this is where Gohan's character path begins, as a tool being used. In fact, it's Gohan's use as a tool-like character in Toriyama's arsenal that prevented Gohan from becoming a main character. This is particularly shown after the Cell Saga and through the Buu Saga, one of the most hated and controversial arcs in Dragon Ball Z. And I think it makes sense. Gohan had, after the Cell games, come to an understanding of his rage. He had come to a realization that he can have both. He can be a human and a Saiyan. This was something that 16 had taught to him, to let it go, because there were some people that words could not reach. This right here, this moment, Gohan activating and finally releasing Super Saiyan 2 is the climax of Gohan's character. This is when Gohan truly becomes a person, finally fulfilling his character arc and going from the child he was filled with fear to someone dependable, someone who could choose to react with rage or react with kindness. Gohan can't handle the power at first, which makes sense, as he goes into a cold, bloody rage. This showing perfectly resemblance of how Vegeta and the Saiyans had acted during the Saiyan Saga. And then, after Goku sacrifices himself to Cell, we see Gohan take control. Gohan finishing off Cell with the help of his friends, the help of human power, as Gohan fulfills his destiny and defeats Cell. Now, there's a lot of people who would already be saying that the Frieza Saga is the superior saga, and the pacing of the Cell Saga was poor because of editors, and all of that. And I do agree with you. The first half of the Cell Saga, the Android arc, was a mess. <laughs> but, the introduction of Future Trunks provides us more insight into Gohan's character, something that people had wanted to see him become in Dragon Ball Z. And after a realization from the Buu Saga, this is someone that Gohan would have become, had Piccolo's path been what he followed. Future Gohan is someone who never had unlocked Super Saiyan 2. He was never able to control his rage. If he had, Gohan could have killed the androids and stopped all the destruction in the future when his friends had been slaughtered the first time. At that point, that was the only time Gohan would activate the Super Saiyan transformation. A Saiyan purely transformation formed on Wrath. And that's as far as he'd go. Without Piccolo or Goku as some sort of mentor figure in his life, Gohan now had to carry the burden alone. Just like when Piccolo had dropped him in those mountains all those years ago. Gohan was the last survivor. We can see how Gohan was affected by his friend's deaths and the effect of the androids in the future in his reluctance to train Trunks at first. Gohan didn't want Trunks to end up like him. He didn't want Trunks to be stuck at a pathway, stuck at crossroads that he could never choose. And it's this future form of Gohan that shows us the path that a lot of people wanted him to take. A path where Gohan still continued to be a tool. With no one around anymore to force him what to do, the only tool left that Gohan had was the consciousness that he was the only person powerful enough to protect the planet. While the Future Trunks special isn't actually canon in the manga, it is supplementary material which deeply displays Gohan's character and what many people thought Gohan would grow to become. The Cell games changed all of that. The reason Gohan becomes who he is after the Cell games is because he finally had acceptance. Goku had accepted him for who he was. His father and Piccolo had given him permission, saying that it was okay that he could be his own person. That's what the final symbolism of Goku passing the torch, telling Gohan to do things his way, as Goku dies. Watching the Cell arc again, it's clear that this was the most powerful, emotional, final climax of Dragon Ball Z. And honestly, it should have been where the story should have ended. It should have ended with the next generation taking up the power to make their own choices the power to protect the world on their own, without someone forcing their hand, being tied into destiny. And that's why the Cell Games is the peak of Dragon Ball.